there is an operational need, but uh, Clément, in, in your paper, you're also uh, pointing out to that lag effect, but also on the fact that this is paving the way to big tech intrusion into what naturally would be uh, the sovereign space for state. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? It's an interesting sure. part. Um, my point on sovereignty was that when, from a public sector point of view, is that when you deal with a private company uh, to carry out a policy, um, actually, you, you, without any doubt, you will improve the efficiency of your policy, but you will lose control the control that you had over this, um, over this policy. So it's not really a debate about sovereignty, it's a debate about the level of control that you want to retain on a, a, a given uh, policy. Let me uh, take an example. You had this debate during the crisis uh, around the tracking uh, application on mobile phone uh, for uh, the French uh, in the room, it's tout uh, senti Covid uh, on your mobile phone. Um, the French government decided to develop a sovereign centralized application by itself, whereas other governments uh, in Europe, um, including uh, eventually the UK and Germany, decided to go with the Apple uh, Google solution, decentralized uh, solution. Actually, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but th there was a fierce debate in Germany about the state having access to a massive amount of personal data. Um, and in France, the debate was pretty different. Um, you, you have to look at the, the, the speech by the Minister for uh, Digital Affairs, uh, the French Minister for Digital Affairs, Cédric O, in front of the, the National Assembly. He had to explain to the MPs why the, gov the French government uh, wanted to develop a sovereign application. And he told them, it's no surprise that France uh, wants to develop a sovereign application because France is the only uh, co country from continental Europe to possess um, nuclear weapons. And I think the link between um, nuclear weapons and digital sovereignty can, be, can seem far-fetched, but actually it tells a lot about the, the, the French conception of digital sovereignty. And it's very different than the German one, I think. And the gap... <laughs> you want yeah, to... May I add to that? It's very interesting because I think in Germany the perspective is from uh, the past and data protection. Yeah. You know, to lose yeah. data to, to a foreign state exactly. rather than from this perspective of kind of nuclear weapon because it's definitely different history and we'd have a different military. But uh, from, from our perspective, like I've heard Palantir was used in France for the yeah. database. Unimaginable in Germany. Yeah, Unimaginable. Like that the American France, company yeah. is building the COVID database for, for a country because people give their data, right? It's a patient's data. That's okay. right. That was my second example. In France, we have the internal security service uh, contracting with Palantir to build up a database uh, on security issues. So are we sovereign on our security policy is a question. Question. Yeah, question. question. So my second point about sovereignty was about values. Because I think um, when it comes to technology, values matter. Uh, technology is never value ne neutral. And I will take the example of smart cities, because China has been developing smart cities for, I think, 20 years now. It was after the Thrust ep epidemic in 2003. And uh, more and more um, defense and security companies uh, in China are investing into, into smart city solutions. And China is more in, in selling more and more is, um, smart city solutions to um, Central Asia, African countries, and the Middle East. And it, it, it has become um, a soft power tool. And in the official language in China, smart city is called safe city. So you see, it's, it's very different from, from our conception. So I think when it comes to to GovTech, values matter, and we'll have to, to dig on that um, in the years to come. And my final point for, uh, on this topic of sovereignty is for states to handle the rise of GovTech, they will have to um, be very, very clear on uh, which policy they want to outsource or not. Second point, um, they have to attract new talents because uh, they will have to deal uh, on the same level of knowledge and skills with uh, private companies. And I can assure you it's a 
real revolution for uh, public uh, HR to attract new, new talents on the GovTech sector. And finally, I, I really believe um, that it should be um, a subject for public debate. I mean, uh, citizens have to uh, be able to give their word uh, to express themselves on, on the, the subject of GovTech, because in the end, uh, it is the quality of public services that is at stake, and uh, eventually, there are personal data. Absolutely.